Have you guys seen the interview between Sandy Monroe and Elon Musk? If you guys haven't, spoiler alert. This video is going to be a spoiler alert. But if you guys have, or maybe you guys want to watch the full 40 minutes, I recommend you guys do it. It was a sheesh moment. But there's some interesting things that Elon said that Sandy pulled out out of Elon that's really worth mentioning. It was a sheesh moment that's the best way i can put it and yes it's regarding the compact car so let's not waste any more time smash that like button if you haven't already and hit subscribe if you haven't already all right let's go the twenty-five thousand dollar tesla and so i'm wondering where where is that exactly where where are you with that yeah, yeah unfortunately because we're a publicly traded company i cannot comment on things that would have a material impact on our financials so first sandy monroe tries to be direct and ask him about the compact car and you know some information and then Elon rejected him. It didn't go too well. But Sandy is smart and he got around it. And this is how he did it. And the response. Yeah, but anyways, I, um, I'm hoping that that's not too far down the line. I really, really would like to see that vehicle is like a hundred plus grand. I think that I think that that's the right price for this. But it's not the right price for the for the kid that wants to take one to uh, college or whatnot. So. That's why I'm, I'm kind of anxious to find out what, what it is that can be done for those uh, others that, uh, that want to get into electrification but can't. So if we can't do that, then let me shift gears. And what do you think about well, the I mean, new... I can say a little oh. bit. I just can't tell you, you know, unit volume and dates because that, yeah. that is projecting the financials. Yeah. Um, so we obviously are, we are working on a low-cost electric vehicle that will be made in very high volume. Um, we're like, quite far advanced in that work. The, you know, I review the, the, the production line plans for that every week. Um, and I think the, the revolution in manufacturing that will be represented by that car uh, will blow people's minds. It is not like any car production line that anyone's ever seen. Is this going to have the unbox system or would this be too much of a question to ask. The thing that's most interesting about this is, is it's a production system. It's, it's a level of production technology that is uh, far in advance of any automotive plant on Earth. All right, let's stop right there. Let's talk about it because there was a lot of interesting things. The first thing he said was far advanced in that work, meaning that they are either halfway or three quarters of the way done. When Elon says they're far advanced in this, it doesn't mean about the car. Now, obviously, he does some. He does say other things about the car as well. That is far advanced. But he's talking about the, per, the the progress of the vehicle and the fact that he's saying that it's far advanced in that work. That's crazy. It means that they've been doing this for quite some. I mean, if you guys read the book, you guys would already know. But I think just from that alone, we are closer than we think. And there's another. Spoiler, which we'll get to that in the video that confirms this. The other thing he said is that the revolution of manufacturing that car will blow people's mind. I have no idea what he's talking about here. I'm, I'm thinking how the car is going to be built on the production line, all that kind of stuff. So that is going to be very interesting to see. So let's see what he means by that. Maybe it's going to be something so simple. But so let's see. And then he goes on to say, to back up the revolution of manufacturing is that nothing like we've ever seen before. It was the first time happening. The way that we think how cars are being made is going to be completely different. I do think he means the machines building the machines. Not too sure if this is a foreshadow for the bot, which I don't think so. But I'm getting more curious every single time. And then at the end, he says that production technology is far advanced of any other automotive plant on the earth. So again, Juicy stuff. It looks like the way they're going to make this compact car is going to be completely different, very innovative, like how they did with the Cybertruck and with the other vehicles that they did as well. So absolutely a sheesh moment, but it gets even more sheesh here. And I should point out the, uh, that, that we will be making, the, 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 the first production line will be here in the Gigafactory in Texas, in, in, in this facility. Oh, I thought it was going to be in Mexico or something. That'll be the second place. Hmm. Wow, that's way cool. It would take too long to complete the factory in Mexico. So putting two and two together, the car right now being built and the production line, all that kind of stuff, and bringing the car together is far in advance in that work. Halfway through or 60%, 70%, whatever. Then Elon says that the first production will be done in Giga Texas and the second place will be done in Giga Mexico. Guys, do you guys know what, I mean, this is huge. This is huge news. Giga Mexico was supposed to be done by late 2025, early 2026, where we expect to get the compact car to be mass produced. 
But if it's going to be built and produced in Giga Texas first, I know it's going to sound crazy, but this looks like this is going to happen sometime beginning of early 2025 or sometime in 2025. It could be beginning mid or at the end of it. It looks like, again, we're going to be getting this compact car a whole lot sooner than we think. And, I, and, and the way that I think Tesla is going to launch this product is that they're going to get everything done, make sure that the line is there. They're going to make sure that they can produce it at least to some level of scalability. And then when it's all ready, they're going to have an event day or just a normal day, not even an event day, just have a, you know, on X and just on the website. And hey, we got a compact car now, you know, $25,000 order now. And if you want to get a test drive, just come to our showroom because we have it in every showroom because the line is ready to be, you know, is ready to mass produce or scale to some level. Then we can have it an event day or something. I have no idea, but I think that's how it's going to be. Because if they do, here's the thing with the compact car. If as a customer, if I'm going to be a future Model 3 owner or a Model Y owner, and I know that they're going to make a compact car and it's happening for sure, and I know it's going to come out in the next, you know, three to six months, why should I get the Model 3 and Model Y? That's going to cannibalize the 3 and the Y, because compact car, I mean, the way how they're saying it, far advanced, manufacturer is going to be like no other. So it looks like it's going to be a very, very bank for your buck vehicle. And if that's the case, why well, get the three and the Y? So I do expect some sort of cannibalizing. And this is the vehicle, guys, that we need to have in order for Tesla to reach the, you know, the high 10, 15, 20 million vehicles per year. This is going to take majority of it, majority of the numbers to that 20 million. It's a sheesh moment. I, I love Sandy Monroe for getting all this information out of him. Like these are supposed to be like low key secrets. But sheesh, Sandy Monroe got it out of him. And man, I love you, Sandy Monroe. And again, it looks like we may be getting the compact car maybe less than two years. This is going to be a sheesh moment. Let me ask uh, an adventurous question. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I made a lot of noise about what I think the future is going to look like. And one of the things that I've said is that probably uh, the biggest car company on the planet will be BYD. And then I'm putting Tesla in on second simply because BYD's got such a head start. Um, I've heard plenty of people criticizing that, but who do you think is going to be the winners and losers in um, in the car industry? I think it's too early to say for sure, but um, I mean the future is definitely electric. So yeah. companies that are not making a significant investment in electric electric vehicles are basically consigning themselves to the fate of the horse and buggy market. Uh, you know, in the 1920s, yeah. You know, there were companies that would double down on the on on horse carriages. You you, you don't want to be the buggy whip manufacturer in the age of automobiles. Yes. Yeah. Sandy Monroe predicts that BYD is going to be number one in terms of EV makers around the world. Then it's going to be Tesla. Well, looking at how BYD is scaling on how much of a cheap vehicle that they have. Yes, but in terms of quality and build, and you know, if you want to have that quality effect, then Tesla is going to be number one for sure. But if you want to talk about, you know, scaling to next level, if BYD can make 15, 20 million vehicles a year, then sure, Sandy Monroe is going to be right. But in terms of revenue profitability, no way, Jose. It's going to be number one, Tesla. But nonetheless, he's talking about scalability and how many EVs we can get out there. And BYD, because they have $10,000 vehicles right now and they can scale like crazy, sure. No problem, number one. But one thing is for sure, guys, EVs are the future, okay? I mean, that, that's number one. Elon Musk said it himself. I mean, the dude has a lot of data and we can see what's happening in the market and what people want. And those who are not investing to make EVs are going to be left behind. And Elon Musk came out with a hilarious metaphor is that he said, I had to write this down here, like in the 1920s, people doubling down on horse carriages while automobiles were coming in and so i mean that's exactly what's happening right now as, as you guys can see legacy automakers are going like oh yeah there's no demand for evs you know people want gas cars so you know what because of that we're gonna write a letter to the white house and say to everybody that nobody wants evs and people still want their gas cars so stop making them evs and you know because we're losing a lot of money on them and let's just make the gas cars because we can make a lot of money on them but little do they know or more than they know that the market is going towards evs so really, I don't know what legacy automaker is doing. And unfortunately, if these legacy automakers cannot get their act together with their EVs, the Chinese are going to replace them. 
and that's what's going to bankrupt these legacy automakers for tesla although it does impact them a big big time i don't think they're going to be the reason why they go bankrupt why because it's kind of hard to compete with tesla with the software and you know the fsds and so many other technologies coming out with teslas that these other automakers can't really grasp on yet and so if there's no point of competing with Tesla at this point, it really, there really isn't a point to compete with them. It's just a Chinese makers now. If the Chinese maker can make the EVs a whole lot cheaper and faster, I don't know how Ford and GM and all those other guys are going to survive. And it's going to be crazy because Chinese companies are banking up American companies, which is a scary thought if you ask me. But anywho, that's what's going on. That's, I mean, shout out to Sandy Monroe for getting these things out of Elon and this was worthwhile to make a video about it because now we got some information about the compact car the sooner we can get the compact car that's more total addressable market for Tesla the sooner we can get that out the more market Tesla can penetrate in and the more they can sell and these guys are high margins by the way the way how Tesla's making them this is at least about 20 percent 25 percent gross profits so it's going to be an absolutely a sheesh moment and we need this we need this for Tesla stock to go just a little bit more higher because now we have more market to attain and not to mention the full self-driving and the more we can get these bad boys out I mean by then 2025 I do think we have FSD somewhat solved I mean it's kind of somewhat solved now but 2025 is going to be even more solved so imagine people driving $25,000 vehicles on the streets and majority of people are picking this because it's cheaper and you get full self-driving on it and it's going to be a different world in the next two three years and that's going to bring Tesla stock to new heights. How high? Check out the video here including the Cybertruck compact car with the FST and without the FST. Obviously it's just a prediction and a prediction alone. But uh, I'm all into this stock for a reason, man. So that's all I gotta say. Check it out. You went disappointed. Gayer, I bought the Deb t shirt, man. If y'all wanna support me, use the discount code 10%. I said GFY. If you guys know, you know to get 10% off. And subscribe and I shall see you guys in the next video. See ya.